What's up guys, Will here with March's PC build. This PC is gonna be for my brother-in-law. Basically his wife came up to me and said that he deserved a new computer. So I said, give me a budget and off we went. So this is this budget is gonna be a $2,000 range. It might be a little cheaper. I think the Intel chips uh, dropped a little bit from when I uh, originally bought them due to Ryzen being released. So I know they got uh, their prices dropped a little bit, but probably won't be by much. Um, so. Starting off for the case, we have the Corsair Crystal R460X RGB. And then I really like this case of the side and front glass panels and the RGB uh, fans. I think it's really going to look really good um, after the build's done. Um, for uh, motherboard, we're using the Asus Strix Z270F gaming motherboard. Uh, should have some great uh, overclocking capabilities with this. And then going in that is the Intel Cabby Lake 7600K, 3.8 gigahertz base clock, um, quad core processor. Should be well into the 4. Point, you know, 4.3, 4.5 gigahertz range with uh, overclocking it. For the graphics card, we're using the Asus Strix GTX 1080. I've uh, been really wanting to try this card out, especially it goes with the build of the lighting, same with the motherboard. But normally I've been using the MSI uh, GPU, so I definitely wanted to try something different for this build. For memory, we have 3000 megahertz uh, Vengeance LED, 16 gigabytes worth. This is the first time I've been going to be using uh, any lighting effect on memory, so I'm pretty excited about how it's going to turn out. And then for storage, we have uh, MP500 by Corsair. It's 400 gigabyte, 480 gigabyte NVMe uh, drive. And then for standard data use, you know, I don't know if he's even going to use this because all he does is play games. Uh, standard one terabyte Seagate hard drive. And then powering everything, we're using the 850 watt Corsair power supply. Really like these. It gives him enough power if he wants to in the future to upgrade to another 1080 with no issue. And then lastly, we have the Corsair H100 V2, which is going to be uh, provide liquid cooling to the CPU. I've uh, been using these for a lot of the builds I've been do using or doing, and I uh, really can't say any bad thing about it. So. With that being said, I think I covered everything, so let's build this thing.
Alrighty guys, got the build done. Let me preface this portion with the computers already with my brother-in-law. I delivered it last Sunday. Basically, Michigan got hit with a windstorm and uh, last week and my power as well as 700,000 other people got hit with it and their power went out. So, and I lost it, I think I got back midday Friday. Had things going on, unfortunately. So I got a day of benchmarking on this machine. So it was pretty stressful on getting everything for the video ready. So that's why it's late. So, but moving on to the build, basically it went pretty easy. The only thing I had issues with were space constraints, and that was due to the mid ATX mid ATX case. Um, the I tried to mount the liquid cooler on top of the case, but that wasn't going to work because once the reservoir and the fans were on it, it was hitting the ramp slots. And same thing with the when I tried to mount it on the side, I actually had to utilize the RGB lights on the front panel to go against the reservoir um, to basically provide cooling for it because there's just not a lot of space in that case. And even with that, with the reservoir on the side, there's only about a half inch of space clearance between that, the video card, and the bottom covering of the case that covers the PSU and the hard drive caddy. And that's another thing. I had to move the hard drive caddy to the front so that I could route my PSU cables because, like I said, there's just not enough space. And it kind of looks gaudy because the hard drive caddy, you can see about three quarters of an inch of the hard drive sticking out, which, you know, it's all right, but... Not really something you want to see, especially with a nice, you know, glass case. So, the only other thing besides that was the fans. I would have liked to see an RGB fan on the exhaust. Basically, the, the glass is already tinted. And it's, it's really dark for the most part. Um, in the build, as you'll see from the B-roll, you can really only tell what components are which have lighting effects, which was the RAM, motherboard, uh, graphics card, which is a lot for this build. You can, you know, it shows them off, but... As far as the details of like the motherboard or other features of the graphics card, such as the backplate, you really can't see it. So, but that also is a good thing because, like I said, the space constraints, you know, routing the front headers to the bottom of the motherboard, uh, they were hidden for that for the most part. So that was good. And cable management, like I said, due to size constraints, was a, was a challenge. Um, it could be better by just adding maybe an inch and a half of space, both height and width wise. So, but I was able to get this thing going. Um, like I said, my brother-in-law already has it. Uh, he's loving it so far. So it's performed really good. It's a big upgrade. Pretty funny because when I got there, I booted up his old machine and just this loud, whiny sound was coming from it from his fan. So I'm glad we, uh, we got the new PC doing in time so he doesn't have to deal with that. Uh, or his wife deal with that noise, for that matter. So, um, let's uh, look to the benchmarks and see how this thing did. Alrighty, guys. As per usual, I'm starting out with Unigen Heaven. And as we can see at 1080p, this rig is not going to have any issues with game running at max settings. We can also see at Ultra HD and 4K resolutions, we have decent scores. And it's also worth mentioning that the 1080 at P and Ultra HD scores are basically identical to the MSI 1080 that I reviewed a few months ago. So go check that video out if you haven't. Moving on to 3D Mark benchmarks, running Time Spy, which is a DX12 benchmark, I did a multitude of resolutions. 1080p is still kicking ass as well as Ultra HD. I'm not too keen on the 23 FPS at the 4K resolution, but let's not get caught up in it. DX12 is still pretty new. Moving on to Fire Strike Extreme, benchmark for multiple GPUs, again shows that what we've been seeing. I'm still trying to figure out the difference between 2560 by 1440 and 3440 by 1440 resolutions. I mean, sometimes I see significant differences, then sometimes I see no difference at all. So that being said, running at 4K, we achieved 30 FPS, which is pretty damn good. Moving away from the synthetic benchmarks, let's get into some games. GTA 5 at max settings, a game that both stresses the GPU and CPU, we see some really good FPS on our resolutions, the only caveat being turning MSAA off, which doubles our FPS, and to be honest, I haven't witnessed any difference in gameplay whether it's on or off. That being said, being able to play GTA 5 at a comfortable 70 FPS at 4K resolution is pretty badass. 
Battlefield 1 at Ultra Preset runs both Ultra HD and 4K over 60 FPS, which is a pretty awesome experience. Sadly, due to time and frankly forgetting, I did not test DX12, but this game really looks awesome at these frame rates, especially on my Ultra Wide. Witcher 3, another game that's going to tax your CPU and GPU. This again we ran at Ultra Preset with high post processing. And as we can see again, all resolutions are playable. To get over 60 FPS at 4K resolution though, you'll need to dumb down the settings just a little bit, but it's definitely doable without sacrificing too much. Again, this game looks amazing. And lastly, Overwatch, which is no surprise, runs at 100 plus FPS at all resolutions. I double checked my numbers as I found it a little weird I was getting better FPS at 4K resolution than at 1080p. You can see here though that the CPU I believe starts to be the bottleneck at 100 plus FPS. And at that much FPS, what are you really going to complain about? Benchmarking the processor with Cinebench, we can see the score without any overclocking and we score a 536. Now with overclocking preset that was built into the motherboard, we get a 717 which is pretty significant improvement with a boost type overclock. I'm definitely eager to get this rig back when I have more time so I can properly overclock the base clock. I just, at, like I said in the beginning, I didn't want to give him a rig that wasn't stable as I did not have enough time to properly overclock it. Now lastly, and if anyone's interested, here are the read and write speeds, speeds of the Corsair MP500. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, and hopefully you noticed, I got some 4K resolutions for this video. Um, I did buy a Asus uh, Rogue 4K monitor, um, so look for a review on that, but definitely wanted to get that so I could start doing some 4K benchmarks. But as we saw in performance, this thing can definitely game. Um, even at 4K, we can definitely get 60 FPS and everything we play. Might have to dumb down the settings in some games, but nothing that's going to, you know, make it not worth it to view in 4K. Um, <clears throat> as far as time constraints, it, it definitely put a bottleneck in me uh, being able to uh, overclock this thing. I did basically ran out of time. I did do the preset on the motherboard, which boosts the overclock or the boost clock on the processor, and it was reached 4.4 gigahertz. But it definitely can do a lot more. I feel I just didn't want to, you know, raise the voltage um, and then give it to him and have it be uh, unstable because he wouldn't know how to, you know, restore the faults and fix that issue. So let me know what you guys think about the build. I. I I really did like it. I like the case, even though it had space issues. I am going to stick with it for uh, my Ryzen build, which I'll be doing uh, next week, or the next video, rather. I don't know when it'll go up, hopefully by Saturday. But <clears throat> that's going to be it for this video, guys. Please leave a like if you guys enjoyed it. And then if you guys want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. I also want to take time to say thank you for the 200-plus subscribers. I think we're at like 210 right now, so... We're a lot farther than I thought I would be after I think I've been maybe two months now. So it's pretty good, uh, pretty good at growing the channel so far. So I'm pretty thankful for that. So thank you guys again. Um, I also want to take time out if you want to build a PC or you know build a custom PC but don't feel comfortable doing it, you know get a hold of me with the email in the description below and I'd be more than happy to build for you just as long as I can make a video and benchmark it. So let me know if you guys are interested in that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.